In this video series, I want to show you how to develop cross-platform C++ and c .NET applications that can run on Windows and Linux, and what you can do if those applications have dependencies to each other. This first video will focus on how to set up a cross-platform development environment on Windows using Visual Studio and Windows Subsystem for Linux, or short WSL. We will also create a C++ project, and I will show you how to build and debug the project on Windows and Linux. To make things more interesting, in the next video we will use the created C++ library inside a second c .NET project where we will call methods from the library again on Windows and Linux. Before we start, welcome to the channel. Here you can find videos about everything Linux, Docker, software development and game dev or short, Agile Dev Art. If you like that kind of content, then please like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. All the necessary links from this video are down in the description. And also down there are the timestamps, so you can skip any part of this video. As mentioned, we will use Visual Studio, and with it we need to install some additional components for cross-platform development. So let's get over to the Visual Studio installer and let's see what we need. This is the Visual Studio installer. I'm using the version 2022. And now to install additional components, select Modify, then select Individual Components. Here you can see the only component installed on my system is the .NET 6 runtime with the check mark. We will need this one, so make sure it is checked. Then we will need CMake. Here select both C++ CMake tools for Windows and C++ CMake tools for Linux. And also we will need WSL, .NET debugging with WSL. Check this one. Now here on the right you can see the components that will be installed. For this demonstration this should be sufficient, so let's go with modify and let it install. Installation finished. Now just to be sure, go to modify again and in addition select the .NET development package and also the desktop development with C++ package. And now modify again, let it install. Installation finished, all components are installed. The next thing we need to do, we need to set up WSL and install some additional components there. So let's see how this works. On this official Microsoft website you can find the installation instructions for WSL. It should be as easy as calling this command here in PowerShell. So I will assume that you already have WSL installed on your system. And now the next step is logging in into WSL into the Linux distribution. So let's do this. In PowerShell just type WSL, enter. And now I'm logged in into my Linux distribution. Here I will do sudo apt update, enter. This will update the repositories. And then I will install some additional packages. This is the command, sudo apt install. And I will install G++, GDB, make, CMake, ninja build, rsync and zip. So enter. And Y for yes. Let it install. Installation complete. Now everything should be set up properly and we can create our first project. Let's get over to Visual Studio. We are now inside Visual Studio and first let's create the C++ project. Let's go to create new project and up here write CMake. CMake project, select it and next. I will name the project test lib because this will be the C++ test library. Location is OK and create. This is the project in Visual Studio. You should not see any errors down here. The error list should be empty. Now this is a very simple template, it just contains one source file and this one just writes hello CMake to the console and that's it. Now let's see how we can build, run and debug this one on Windows. I will add a breakpoint here on line 10. Then system target local machine is ok. Configuration x64 debug is also ok. Default preset. And here we need to change the target to testlib.exe. So this will create an executable testlib.exe and it will be executed on Windows. So let's build and run. Play. We already reached the breakpoint. Hello CMake. And now if I continue, the application finished executing. And here in the debug console, we can see Hello CMake. This was written by the application. We are done here, so we can close this one. Also in the solution explorer on the right, we can enable show all files. And then in here, we should see the result executable, testlib.exe. That was Windows. We can also build, run and debug this one in Linux in WSL. Let's see how this works. We need to change the target system from local machine to WSL Ubuntu. Now let it configure. Now for Linux, the whole source here was copied to this folder right here in the WSL distribution. Let's find that one. 
in the Explorer under Linux, Ubuntu, Home, My User, .vs. Here is the folder testlib, and inside is the full source code. The full source code will be synced over to WSL, and then the compiling and building will happen in WSL, and if you run the application, the application will also run in WSL. So let's try this out in Visual Studio. Set the target to test lib. Breakpoint is still here. And let's try it out. Build and run. And again, we reach the breakpoint, but this time in Linux. Now, if we take a look into the WSL console, let's try to install htop and write htop-t. HTOP is a simple process monitor for Linux, and here you can see clearly GDB debugger is currently debugging our executable test lib. Now back to Visual Studio. We are still at the breakpoint, and now if we step over this line, down here we can see Hello CMake was written to the Linux console. And now if we just continue, the application finished, and also HTOP doesn't show any debugging activities anymore. Now if we take a look at the Explorer, Inside the project folder in WSL, there should be an out folder, and inside there, build, linux debug, test lib, and here is the executable test lib that we debugged previously. This was a very simple C++ application, let's take a look at another example. Here I have an article from Oleg Tarasov that perfectly describes everything that we just did in the previous example. It's an excellent starting point for anyone who wants to try cross-platform development, and it also uses a bit more complex example here, and it also describes everything what's going on very well. This is the GitHub page of the project, I can only recommend to check it out. I took this one for the next example and I just tweaked it a bit, so let's see how this one looks like. Back in Visual Studio, and here I just changed and adapted the previous example to be more like the one from GitHub. The most important change here are three new functions. The hello function, which just writes hello from the OS where the application is running. Then the string function, which just gets a string as an argument and then writes hello and the string. And the foo function, which gets the foo structure. And this one just writes out the members of the foo structure. Also the header file changed. Here is the definition of the foo structure. And down here are the three functions that we want to export, because we want to call those functions from outside of the library, and therefore we need to decorate those and export based on the current platform. Since this will be a library, the next change that is important is in this CMake list file. Here, instead of add executable, we have add library. And also, we define DLL exports, because of the functions that we want to export. Alright, let's build this one for Windows and for Linux. First, let's do Windows, so set local machine and set the target to test lib DLL. Now let's go to build and build all. Build all succeeded, and now in the solution explorer again, show all files, and in here we should find the test lib DLL. Now the same for Linux, change the system targets to WSL Ubuntu, and here the target is libtestlib.so. Again, build and build all. Build all succeeded. Let's find the library. Again, the project was synced with WSL and it was also built here. And here under out, build Linux debug under testlib, you should see the lib testlib.so library. And that's it for the first part of this video. In this video, we created, we built, and we debugged a C application on Windows and Linux. In the next video, we will do the same for a C sharp.net application. And in addition, we will also use this C library together with the C Sharp project for Windows and Linux. So stay tuned for the next video and thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, if you like my content, then please give a like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. I really appreciate it, it makes the channel grow. So thank you very much and I'll see you in part 2. Bye.